Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rita Alcolo. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so very much for joining us. If this is not your first time, thank you so much for coming back. So today we are wrapping up the year. This is the last video for 2017. Thank you so very much to everyone who has been watching and who has subscribed, who has commented, who has liked, who has shared my post. This video is for you. We're just gonna chit chat and get ready for the new year. We did this simple New Year's Eve glam that brings a nice icy purpley blue moment to the eyes, but at the same time is simple enough for you to achieve in a very short amount of time. So yeah, that's what we are going to be creating today. By the time this video goes up, I don't know, there may be more than 500 of y'all, but my goal for this year was to at least get to 500 subscribers and I think we are going to hit it. So yeah, thank you so very much for watching and for rocking with me. Before we do get into this video, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. As well, don't forget to follow me on my social media sites. I do link everything and all the, the products down below, so do check those out as well before you leave. All right, without further ado, let's get into this. To start off with, I'm going to be going in with the J1 Jelly Pack Dramatic Firming Skin with Improved Elasticity and Pore Smoothing Primer. It's such a mouthful. I'm just going to take three pumps of that and just place this on my skin. Wow, I literally cannot believe that 2017 is actually over already. That is so crazy. I'm going in with the Huda Beauty Foundation in 520G. Just dotting this onto my skin. You know, it's just something that you can do. You can actually do this look pretty quickly. The eye makeup itself is pretty quick. I want to be able to wrap up 2017 on my YouTube channel with just, you know, kind of looking back on this year when I did start my channel. I started my channel um, Febu in February. I think my first video went up February 13th or February 14th of this year now maybe i should tell you guys why i even decided to start youtube so I, why i decided to start a youtube channel so i was actually supposed to start my youtube channel like three years ago i loved 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 watching youtube tutorials and my first introduction to makeup was actually through youtube just before I was about to go leave for college, um, you know, you have your high school graduation and prom. And for prom, the, I decided I was going to do my makeup by myself. Until that point, I never really wore makeup. So I, I started wearing makeup when I was seven, 17 turning 18. I was about to turn 18 in a few months. I already knew how to do hair. So I already knew I was gonna do my hair myself for prom, but I needed to do my makeup for prom myself. So what did I do? I went onto YouTube and I remember the first video that I really watched on makeup or you know, trying to figure out how to do my makeup was actually Jenny Jenkins. I watched her foundation routine, her foundation highlight and contour routine. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Jenny and I look like we're the same shade, so I'm gonna go buy this. And I went to Walmart. I remember I went to Walmart with one of my best friends. At that time, she knew more. Vanessa, this is Vanessa Montemorano. I'm talking about Vanessa. She knew more about makeup than I did, right? I just went in with the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Toast, by the way. She knew more about makeup than I did. And she helped me to, she helped to shade match me, actually. You know, all the techniques that I saw Jenny doing, I tried to do that. I think I used like an eyeshadow for contour and stuff. Like, I just tried to make it work. And you know what? I'm really proud of that makeup look. I thought I looked great for prom. And that was when I was like, oh my God, you know, I can get better at this. I really can get better at this. And I can show people my journey and stuff. Fast forward, you know, get to college. And not only do I learn how to, you know, I master the techniques on my face, I was able to master it on other individuals as well. Makeup became, was one of my side hustles in college. I love side hustles, by the way. Um, I think it builds discipline. <laughs> I, I, I really do. Because you do have to focus on whatever it is you're doing in terms of like your regular day job 100%, but you also have to be able to put in that extra, extra 100 into 
your side business because it's something you're passionate about. So shout out to everyone with a side hustle. I recommend trying to find side, a side hustle. I'm gonna be going in with the Fenty Foundation in the shade 490 to contour. I wanted to do hair as a side hustle at first. I don't know, the thing with doing hair in college, you know, you're dealing with broke college students. I'm gonna be honest. So you obviously cannot charge regular rates. And one thing I value is my time my time and my skill. In junior year, I really realized, oh my God, what I really wanna do as a side hustle is makeup artistry. That's, that's the other thing, whatever it is you are doing, you wanna make sure that you're trying to become an expert at it. And I have invested <laughs> a lot of money, but I took an artistry class with Renny Vasquez. Renny Vasquez is a celebrity makeup artist he worked with Serena Williams, he's worked with Jennifer Lopez, he's worked with Gabrielle Union. He does a lot of women of color in the industry. And he hosted an artistry class here in DC. And just listening to his story was really inspiring and it kind of just motivated me to keep going. He has actually started off with hair. I'm going in with the MAC Times Patrick Star um, Patrick's Powder. And I'm going to just lightly set my under eyes today. I'm not gonna go in and bake. So long story short, yeah, that's how I that was that's how I got into makeup. Okay, that's how I got into makeup. Now, in terms of my YouTube channel, when it comes to things that I do or work that I put out into the world, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Okay, I wanted to make sure that I was putting out good a uh, good content from the get-go for three years it really shouldn't have taken me three years to be honest because i pretty much knew the ins and outs i knew about lighting i knew about cameras i knew about sound quality i knew about audio i knew i knew everything i needed to know in order to start but it was more out of fear and i think you know when it comes to things that we want to do we sometimes are our own worst enemies. We really do become our own worst enemies because we just fear, you know, what others might think. We fear, act we might even fear succeeding at it. In December of 2016, I made my resolutions. Um, I made a dream board, a vision board. Um, this is something I really enjoy doing and I really do, I would really recommend that you guys try it out. It, it just really helps to lay out or and map out for yourself what it is that you do hope to accomplish. By March 30th of 2017, I wanted to have my first YouTube video out. And I said there was no way I was gonna, you know, I was gonna budget, I was gonna save up for my equipment and stuff. And I was like, there's no stopping me. I'm gonna do this this year. Come, come April, I want to have at least three videos up on my channel. And I'm so proud of myself for even being able to write that down because sometimes when you just keep saying your things, you know, yeah, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, yeah, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. You sometimes never end up doing it. Whatever it is you are trying to accomplish, do write it out. Let me show you guys my vision board, hold on. This was my vision board for the year of 2017. And you can see like, I have a lot of inspirational stuff on here. I, want, I really wanted to make sure that YouTube was really on here. And I, I put right in the middle here a, a quote to remind myself to be fearless in pursuit of what sets my soul on fire. I love making sure that people who look like me are able to find products that, that can really help them feel comfortable and beautiful and feel included in the beauty space. So yeah, this is just, you know, an example of a vision board. One of the quotes on here is, I don't know if you guys can see it. It says, being a black girl right now is like being a part of some super exclusive prestigious goddess organization, it's lit. I love being able to talk and help my other sisters find out products that they can use for themselves. So this is something I really truly enjoy doing. We are at almost at 500 subscribers. How crazy is that? I think, with my subscribers, you guys are so cool and are from a lot of different, like a really diverse group. I can't thank you guys enough. I, I always feel so special um, coming here on YouTube and just being able to talk to you guys and just knowing that everyone is just so kind 
Um, I haven't really had any like negative comments on my channel. I, I had one where some lady told me I looked like a prostitute. So yeah, back to the story of my YouTube channel. In February, I was at the drugstore, I was at Target. I was trying to pick up some stuff and I just so happened to <gasps> stumble into the makeup aisle. And I saw this lady, she was a, probably about my age. She was there standing in the makeup aisle, guys. And she had beautiful, rich, beautiful, deep chocolatey skin. Like I'm talking 480, 490 and Fenty foundation, right? And she was there in the beauty aisle trying to shade match herself, trying to match herself. And I just, my heart just, I knew none of those foundations were gonna fit her. You know, they barely fit me. And I felt so sad at that moment, but yet that was what sparked me to start my channel earlier than I had planned. Cause I was supposed to start it in March. And within two weeks of that encounter with that lady at the store at, at Target, I started my YouTube channel, I uploaded and I said, okay, you know, sometimes we get inspiration or we find our sparks in different areas and I found my spark at Target in the makeup aisle when I saw someone, a woman of color, struggling to find a foundation shade and that's when I said that's what my channel is going to be about, about inclusion, about representation, about access in the beauty, in the beauty space. Everyone deserves to feel and look beautiful. Everyone deserves to have makeup items that do fit their skin tone, do fit their shades, you know? And I thought that that was necessary. So that's how and why I started my beauty channel. I am going to bronze up and warm up my face. So another thing that we can discuss actually is um, what should we call ourselves? The squad you know like our our subscriber fam here so I, if you guys notice there's something I do always say in my videos which is stay blessed and stay golden I'm gonna tell y'all where that came from too so in junior year I had this one friend he was an ex not an exchange what do they call us he was just, he was studying abroad from France in here in in DC he was at Howard University and he actually gave, he gave me the nickname Goldie. I was like, where the hell is this coming from? I don't even, I don't have blonde hair. I don't, you know, I just couldn't, I didn't understand it, but that's what he always called me. He always called me Goldie. Um, now we're gonna be going in with the Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette. So I'm gonna first go in with, with the shade Eden. So he called me, he called me Goldie. And it kind of just stuck after a while. At first I was really annoyed by it, but I was like, whatever, you know, I'm gonna just let you be great. One day I was filming and I think I was just, I, I had just previously just been mentioning that to a friend about it. So I just said it like, stay blessed and stay golden. And it just stuck and I liked it. So should we call ourselves like the, the gold, gold, goldies or hashtag goldie squad? What do y'all think? Maybe we can one day make some merch <laughs> that says Goldie Squad. I'm going in with Amber now. These transition shades work with so many different looks. I'm just sweeping whatever's left underneath my eye. I'm gonna go in with Twilight, which is this beautiful, it's a dual chrome shift color actually. Just gonna go in with this onto my lid. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a purple blue shift actually. A purple pink blue shift it's so interesting but it's not too icy this is for people who don't want to necessarily do silver silver is such a typical New Year's look, uh, cover color now I'm gonna go in with this um, shade topper which is retrograde on my finger and I'm just gonna pop this over the top of that so yeah let me know what should we call ourselves hashtag Goldie squad maybe that kind of has a nice ring to it, hashtag Goldie Squad. I'm now taking the darkest shade in the palette, which is Oud, and I'm just deepening up the corner, the outer edges. I love this eyeshadow, Oud. Typically I would put on eyeliner with an eyeshadow look like this, but I don't want to, so. I'm gonna go in with some mascara, the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. Let me know, guys, what 
some of your favorite highlights of 2017 were in the comment section down below. Definitely one of my biggest highlights was graduating from college. Um, I graduated in May from Howard University. Shout out to my HU fam. Generally, I'm a confident person. I do have higher, a high self-esteem, but I feel like in terms of self-understanding, self-worth, and kind of understanding who I was as a person and where I do want to fit in in this world, in this space, as a black woman, I think Howard University definitely impacted me with all the tools to kind of find myself and navigate that space. Well, I was born, I was born and raised in Nigeria until I was nine, but my crucial developmental years, like my teen years and stuff, I spent in a predominantly white environment and I don't think I appreciated my blackness enough, you know, and my uniqueness enough in those spaces. I even feel bad even just saying it, but like there are times where I was like, man, I wish my skin was, was lighter, you know, like I didn't appreciate being a dark skin woman, you know? I feel bad even just saying that, like just to think to my that my younger self would think like that, you know? But I did. Howard University definitely helped fix that. <laughs> really quickly because you're in a space where everything is pro-black everything encourages you to be yourself to be uniquely you in your blackness you know you will find you don't find i'm not talking like stereotypical black people like there's just so many different types of individuals you know i think it's it's perfectly okay for anybody to enjoy any different thing you might be a black person that likes rock music you might be a black person that likes skateboarding like you, there's no stereotypical black person but what's important is to be comfortable in your blackness you know what i'm saying as as a black individual navigating whatever space you're in yes eye makeup for my highlighter i'm going to be going in with the ColourPop super shock shadow uh super shock cheek pearlized highlighter in Avalon okay this is actually one of my favorite highlighters for deeper skin tones it's very beautiful however I will say that it does dry out so <laughs> I think I need to get a new one um, that's the downside to the, the this um, highlighter it's a beautiful bronzy gold shade look at that really nice so where will everybody be spending New Year's Eve this year I know where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be at church. Like, I'm like slightly super, okay, not even slightly. I'm, I'm highly superstitious with a lot of things. And one of them is bringing in the new year with the Lord. <laughs> I can't imagine like going to a party for New Year's Eve. Like I just, I can't. Even if I ever went to a party, unfortunately, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm gonna be one of those people who goes to the party and then at like 11.59, runs to the nearest church to count down in with the Lord. I cannot imagine being anywhere else other than church. I just feel like it's a great way to kind of recenter and kind of commit your year onto the Lord. And I'm with my family, like it's just, there's no better way. For me, there's no better way. You know, do you boo? But for me, there's just no, other place I would rather be than at church. I'm going to go in with the YSL Rouge Relief Shine lipstick. To top it off, I'm going to go in with the Fenty Gloss. And that's that. I'm gonna spray some Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist and some MAC Fix Plus on the center of my face. All right, guys. This is our finished New Year's Eve quick glam. And we have a little icy moment going on in the eyes. I want to thank you guys so very much for supporting me this year, 2017, with starting my channel, with watching my videos. To those of you who have subscribed, who have liked, who have commented, who have given suggestions, thank you so very much. I truly do appreciate it. Um, I truly appreciate you guys supporting me. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I do wish you guys a happy holiday. I wish you nothing but the best in 2018 as well. 
blessings upon blessings upon blessings for each and every one of you. I hope you guys are able to accomplish all your goals and your aspirations and that you're able to really find your passions and really run with it, you know, continue to do the things that set your soul on fire. Thank you so very much for watching this. I do hope to see you in another tutorial very soon. Don't forget, you can check out a few of my other videos. I will link them here per usual. And until then, stay blessed and stay golden.